Now, ladies and gentlemen, E3 is a very busy time, and fortunately, things don't get quite on the border of mayhem here. However, Saints Row the Third is a different story, and with me is Greg Donovan to talk about Saints Row the Third, a game where mayhem is the least of your worries. That's, that, that's right. It's uh, it is definitely pushing the envelope here. Excellent, Greg. Now, Saints Row, third entry in the Saints Row series. Uh, Saints Row 2, obviously, open world action game. Lots of craziness going on. One of these games we used to gather around in the office and just see, you know, just start throwing people into the river or try to fly planes with no clothes on. Like, right. silliness, just real open world playground kind of stuff. Is that what you're going for with Saints Row the third as well? Uh, yes, and then some. I would say that um, I think Saints Row 2 solidified its identity of being over the top gameplay. Yeah. We wanted to take that theme and that vision and prescribe it to everything, the whole experience. So, and I don't mean to interrupt you now, but there's already mayhem going on right now. There's, you know, indiscriminate punching in the groin. One of the great things about the open world games and the sandbox gameplay and our philosophy with the whole over the top is, uh, you know, why um, let players just punch pedestrians when you can like take them down by flying, you know, flying takedowns and <laughs> punching them in the nuts. And then strike a pose afterwards, which is yeah. really what makes it. You know, it. There's a certain unique blend of humor that is uh, very um, indicative of the franchise and uh, it's, it's certainly comes off very well, we think, in this third iteration. And just one of the things that makes it such a delightful mayhem. Now, what we're watching here is some, is you know, a big length of excellent B-roll you guys have brought by. So we're going to sort of, you know, if, if you folks have questions on what's going on, Greg's happy to answer them. You know, if you want to know how, why did he just have giant fists? What was that blue dangly thing that he just put away? Well, the whole philosophy is like, why give players a baseball bat when you can give them a giant phallic weapon. It's yeah. a lot more fun, again, hitting the over-the-top theme, fits in the universe. Some fun physics at yeah. play, too. Well, coming up here, here's something great. We'd be like This section of the city is owned by the Luchadors, one of three gangs of the antagonists in the game. Well, first, we're actually going to, you know, um, meet with some of the citizens of Steelport. Just have there. a local dance-off. Yeah, we've got... Because you, know, you don't always want to punch someone until they explode. Sometimes you want to dance. Right, when they look like that. But you get a reward <laughs> if you take these guys out. And then you could do it with an AK-47, but let's do it with uh, calling in an airstrike. <laughs> you know, you Who get, says close air support is just for military you know conflict? It, it's like this is we're giving players these types of weapons from the very beginning of the game. We think it fits. It, it's, it's, it's fun. So right out the gate, people aren't going to have to wait too long to start going crazy. Correct. I mean, it's like the start of Saints Row the Third. The Saints are at the top of their game. I mean, they're well-known celebrities. And they've licensed out their image on lunch boxes, bobbleheads, tennis shoes, energy drinks. So they've got all this money and power. And contextually, it's for design. It makes sense that we can give players these airstrikes and fun weapons right from the get-go. Uh -huh. Sandbox gameplay is more fun. We have fun toys to play in. That's so, absolutely true. And when you can just pick up and get to that fun stuff, you don't have to wait a whole long, a huge long time. Now. There will, I presume, there will be some kind of progress throughout. You will get access to different stuff or you know new areas. What talk to me about how the game changes as you play? Right. Okay. So um, the, the basic backstory is that there's this group called the Syndicate. The Syndicate is, is made up of three gangs. You know, they are a conglomeration of very powerful gangs. Gangs. They ask the Saints to join them. The Saints say, "No way. We want to be by ourselves." That creates the initial conflict. They kidnap the Saints, who bust out of their private jet and land in their city. It's called Steelport. Mm -hmm. Saints Row the Third takes place in a completely new city called Steelport. And the main setup is like, okay, the Saints are lost in Steelport. They need to figure out who the Syndicate are and take them out and show the world that the Steelport belongs to the Saints, not, not the Syndicate. And now while we're talking about Steelport, we actually have a question coming in from Edwin in Orlando who wants to know about the relative size of Steelport versus Stillwater, the location for Saints Row 2. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about city size. It's always been interesting for me. We never set out and saying it needs to be X miles by X miles square. For us, with the new tech, it's been like, does the city feel right for the game? Yep. We didn't want to like create um, a city based on New York and retrofit gameplay in there. We had our level designers and our artists working together and make sure that the space that we created complemented the gameplay. So I honestly don't know how big it is. I will tell you that it's certainly big enough. You're gonna see here, there's flying vehicles that can fly through it and they're gonna have more than enough area to explore. Excellent, now uh, we've got one player playing right now in the B-roll, but one of the great things about Saints Row 2 was drop-in, drop-out cooperative play. 
Right. Is that come, making a comeback in the third? Absolutely. We think that that model was, um, you know, press and players alike really liked it. Seamless drop in, drop out. Come in when any time you want. We're not messing with it. Um, we're making sure that that is definitely a standout feature in Saints Road in the third. And so, so far we've seen tanks. We've seen this hot car here. Uh, Luke from Wales wants to know if helicopters are back. We have helicopters. It's very fortuitous oh. <laughs> that this question came in here right now. This what a is, timely question, yeah. Luke. We, if driving's not your thing, we got flying vehicles. This is a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, equipped with laser beams, heat-seeking missiles. The great thing is you can switch between Hover Who wants a jet. helicopter when you can have the stag be tall right. jet? Look, press of a button, you'll go right into jet mode here. This thing's incredibly fun to fly. And so are we getting a glimpse now with these skyscrapers in the background of just how big Steelport is? Yeah, exactly. That gives you the, that, that's a skyline. Those are the hero buildings. These are those those really tall hero buildings. Each one is owned by a, a gang in the syndicate. You know, and what's great as far as customization goes. Um, as you progress through the game, you'll be able to customize your own section of the city skyline, create your own stronghold, so you can create your own super skyscrapers at the edge of the island. Oh, excellent. Yep. And now, if you're creating your own skyscraper, do you have any um, artistic direction over those, perhaps to make them inspired by a favorite melee weapon? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, I think certain age grade age uh, ratings group would think we were pushing things a little too far there. So the important thing is, is like you're able to select the different sizes as well as um, combining function and form. So you'll get like a helicopter pad as part of your upgrade. Uh, your <laughs> and now we're getting a couple of questions about, you know, how many different kinds of vehicles are in there. And we've talked about a couple, but then to see these preposterous get ups, I mean, it seems almost the question is, you know, Hard to answer because what is now? What is this giant cannon on the back of this? This is this is cat Professor face. Genki's super ballistic manifold. You can suck up pedestrians and then <laughs> shoot them out. And uh, <laughs> Professor Genki's is a persona in the Steelport. In, yep. in, in uh, Steelport, he um, runs an underground activity called Professor Genki's Super Ethical Reality Climax Show. This is one of his vehicles. You can suck yourself up and then shoot yourself out, as well as your co-op partner. These are the type of like over-the-top weapons that uh, we think are very unique, not only to other video games, but even Saints Row's 1 and 2. Yeah, I, I can't say that a, a portable human catapult with a Cheshire Cat face is something I've seen before. It, you know, it, and that's a good Eleven, thing. It's, we're it's, joined it's by a Zan Creative Absolutely. producer. Absolutely, lots of fun, and uh, it looks like we've reached the end of the, the B-roll there with that sweet dance move. Is that the case, or yeah, is it? I believe so, yes. Yeah. All right, well, Greg, uh, Saints Row the Third. now, we still got some time, so folks are asking questions. They're curious to know um, about, certainly there's plenty of ways for you to express yourself in Steelboard and get up to all kinds of mischief. Give us an idea of some of the actual objectives you'll have to accomplish in your adventure. Okay, yeah, well, we're talking about critical path here, like the main narrative. Mm -hmm. When you find yourself in, in um, Steelport, you need to find out who the syndicate is. And you, you come to discover that it's comprised of three main gangs. And so you basically have to go through and um, take out each of the gang leaders. And about midway through the game, the uh, U.S. government's watching this initial conflict and they say, this is crazy, this is ridiculous, and they create this group called STAG. STAG is a special tactical anti-gang unit, and they send in this force whose task is to just wipe out not only the Saints, but also the Syndicate. So about midway through the game, it's like the whole world set on fire, and you've got this additional yeah, you've got a whole new set of problems. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and you know, the STAG, you know, kind of near future um, government group, that gives you um, some interesting toys about midway through the game as well. <laughs> Care to tell us about one of them? Uh, later on in the campaign. Well, we did see the stag jets. So yeah, that's tell us just a little. It's a, it's a, it's a taste of things to come. Okay, and if we're starting with the stag jet and a uh, man catapult and a tank and airstrikes, who knows? Obviously, there's plenty of room to to improve on that. Yeah, you know, it's just from the beginning, it was all about like not only meeting players' expectations but exceeding them and pushing the envelope, and we're. Very, very excited that later on in the campaign, we have some really crazy, ridiculous, good things to show you. Now, we've talked a lot about sort of the, the campaign and the, that there's co-op throughout. Uh, 
do we have multiplayer modes that we're speaking of today? We do not have competitive multiplayer modes. And I know a lot of people are upset and disappointed about that, but early on we wanted to focus on what we thought was the core of the game, mm -hmm. single player and co-op experience, and make that as like robust and polished and focused as we could. And in Saints Row 2, one of the fun co-op experiences was a game called Zombie Uprising, which was sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah. something outside of the main action, uh, yeah. like a diversion, if you will. Yes. Uh, does Saints Row the Third boast any similar diversions? Yeah, it absolutely does have a. It's like uh, we are capitalizing on our experience from making SR1 and SR2, and we know that Zombie Uprising is a super popular activity. We are taking that and um, putting our own Saints Row the Third special spin on it, and I think players who like that activity are going to be blown away by what we've come up with. <laughs> Zombies again, or something all new? Zombies and then some. And then some? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're taking suggestions on what and then some could possibly be because <laughs> my mind just reels. Um, very cool, Greg. Now, uh, is there any aspect of Saints Row that we haven't sort of touched on yet that you guys are showing off? At the, what do you, what's your presence here at E3 like? What are you guys doing? I've seen you have commandeered a parking lot across the show, uh, across oh, the way. Right. And, you know, I, haven't been out, I haven't been over there yet. They're doing um, they're doing a, a contest called uh, Rim Jobs, which is the name of the store where you customize your vehicles in game. Mm -hmm. And a uh, lucky contest winner took his vehicle. I, I think it was a Honda Civic. I'm not sure. And they're gonna, you know, it's like hit my ride. They're gonna trick it out. I don't know what they're gonna make it into. But, okay. Um, it's actually gonna be worth quite a bit more when they're done with it. And they also have, I'm told, a um, you know a, a car wash, which is um, you know, presumably being um, run by uh, scantily clad. I believe yes, yeah. women in bikinis. Probably. Are, you know, <laughs> applying. Yeah. You know, that seems in keeping with the. Yeah. The sort of lighthearted attitude you guys are going for. Yeah, and E3 in general, right? So. All right. Well, uh, so Saints Row the Third coming out for which platforms, and when can folks start just wreaking havoc in Steelport? Saints Row the Third releases on uh, November 15th in North America, PS3, 360, and PC, and then in Europe, uh, November 18th. Excellent, Greg. Thank you so much for coming Chris. on and showing that Thank off. Thank you, Chris. A lot of fun, folks. I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as I did.